Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. A bit of a special video today. You may have noticed it's been over 5 months since my last Overwatch workshop video. And I know my uploads have slowed down compared to like 3 years ago when the workshop scene was more active. In this video, I want to take the opportunity to explain my recent inactivity, the state of Overwatch workshop, share what I've tried to do and discuss the future of this YouTube channel. Some of you might watch Karkyu's one workshop for every hero from 2020, which was a huge collaborative project within the workshop community to make a hero-specific trainer for every single Overwatch 1 hero. In that project, I contributed Ash, May, Sombra and Reaper trainers. At that time, in the comment section, I mentioned that I was going to start university soon and would be busy with heavy workloads and assignments. Well, it was exactly what happened, which was why I did not have a time to make workshop content. But now in 2024, I have finished my studies and have more free time to do whatever I want. However, instead of a lack of time to do workshop content, I am now no longer motivated to do it. There are several reasons for this which I will go over. The last major workshop update, which added workshop projectiles, was released on 11 April 2023, which is the same patch as Life Weaver's release. Yes, Life Weaver has been around for more than a year. Since then, there have been no major workshop updates, not even new deathmatch maps converted from regular maps. For example, the second section of Watchpoint Gibraltar and Pariso who have been good deathmatch maps. Also for some reason, Havana is available in free for all deathmatch but still unavailable in team deathmatch. Having more deathmatch maps allows for greater map varieties for workshop modes that are built using the deathmatch mode reset, and I could have added more Symmetra minefields and staring contest levels. Control mode maps like Busan and Samoa could also have been elimination mode maps benefiting workshops using the Illumination Mode preset. Even Flashpoint maps could generate 5 deathmatch maps per Flashpoint map, with each deathmatch map centered around a Flashpoint. Or just make the entire Flashpoint map a deathmatch map as well. We workshop creators can divide the maps by ourselves with some workshop magic. Moreover, the original developers behind the workshop systems are no longer working in Blizzard and the workshop has been deprioritized as it does not generate revenue, further constraining its potential. The lack of updates also meant the lack of maintenance and bug fixes. The workshop community has collated a list of workshop bugs in the workshop.codes website, which is probably a bigger list than Doomfist bugs at this point. Despite the repeated requests from the workshop community for a bug fix update, they have been falling on deaf ears. Some bugs were introduced when Overwatch 2 was first released and have remained unresolved to this day, most notably the Inspector. A tool that is useful for debugging is still messed up. Oh, and you cannot enable the Inspector and not too far from the options. Those settings are just gone. Those two are essential debugging tools used by the workshop creators. Many of the Overwatch 2 heroes also work strangely with the workshop, as seen in the following clips. And let's not forget to mention that the Workshop Editor HUD is a downgrade from Overwatch 1 in terms of user experience, due to its clunky usage and excessive mouse inputs required. It 
is why most of us end up using third-party tools like Overpy, OSTW, and Workshop.Codes Editor. With each Overwatch seasonal update, there are more and more bugs introduced, like Workshop beans have been messed up since Season 10. In this screenshot, I've created a red bean of each type, only the bottom most one is wrong. In Season 11, even pasting the default workshop script generated by the game gives you an error. Also weirdly enough, somehow Runasapi is a game mode by itself. Welcome to Runasapi. I aim to liberate. In addition, all seasonal events like Star Watch and Mirror Watch are showing up despite them being unavailable to select in the game mode settings. Also, for some reasons, there are many copies of the same game mode as well. Using a bug video workshop is like working with a faulty game engine. The inconsistencies and unexpected behaviors are frustrating, and scripting workarounds are clunky and inefficient. Before the crossplay patch, the custom games browser only shows lobbies for the region they are locked into. If you log into the American region, you won't see Asian and European lobbies. This means you are competing against fewer lobby hosts, making it easier for players to find your lobby. You could host your fun workshop modes that are different from the rest, and people are going to easily find them. I remember hosting many rounds of Symmetra Minefields or Marksman and most of the matches were full lobby. It was a lot of fun. The There's still some competition with other lobby hosts but it was not too bad, like finding a basketball in a small haystack. Then comes the crossplay patch where it was changed such that the custom games browser now shows lobbies from all three regions, regardless of the region you log into. There's way more competition among other lobby hosts now, so it's way more difficult for players to find your lobby, and you rarely have a full lobby. Now, it's like finding a needle in a large haystack. I tried hosting some Symmetra minefields after this patch, and was hardly getting games started. People came in, waited too long for others to join, and just left. Now it's nearly impossible to host unique custom games and expect a full lobby, making it difficult to playtest new workshop modes that require many players, like PvE or new deathmatch concepts. When you first open the custom games browser, you are greeted with a popular tab. But the problem is that it favors simple game modes because it's based on playtime. Most players just play custom games while queuing, so game modes that do not need a lot of playtime investment became popular and more likely to appear on the front page, while more complex game modes rarely show up in the popular tab, making it difficult to be discovered by players. Sure, there's workshop.codes, but that's an external site and not in the actual game. If Blizzard wanted to incentivize workshop creators to make something cool, they could have done more workshop collaborations. The Demon Lord game mode was a great start, why not do more of it? Many workshops in workshop.codes page could have been a fun, limited time arcade game mode, and it shows appreciation to the creators. Also, a blazing hot idea that I don't think everyone would be on board for. Blizzard could introduce revenue share with creators if they insist so much on monetization. Players can buy accolades with real money and give them to workshop creators. A portion of the purchase goes to the creator and the rest to Blizzard. This helps to incentivize workshop creators to put more effort into their creation, while also having some form of monetization from the workshop. In Bloom CD6, another game that I frequently play, Ninja Kiwi already does that with the accolade system for the players created challenges, odysseys, and maps, so this can be considered. At this point, 
The Overwatch Workshop community is quite upset. Each seasonal patch introduces new bugs, old bugs remain unfixed, and the developers consistently neglect the workshop. As a result, many workshop community members have quit or moved away from the Overwatch Workshop and into game development, including myself. All these factors have led to a significant lack of motivation to continue creating workshop content. Wow, okay, that's a pretty long section talking about the state of Overwatch Workshop and why the community isn't happy. Next, I wanted to talk about what I have tried to do for this YouTube channel. I don't want to abandon it as I had a lot of fun creating things and the channel also came a long way. Firstly, I have tried long-form videos featuring workshop content, such as workshop game nights hosted by the workshop.codes community. But as I previously mentioned, because the community is so upset, they don't host workshop events anymore. So there's no workshop events content for me to record. The last workshop event that was hosted by the workshop.codes community was in April 2024. They even skipped the celebration for the 5th anniversary of the workshop launch because they felt that it was not worth the celebration, given the current state of the workshop. Secondly, I've tried doing Doomfist montages. After all, Doomfist is one of my mains and I thought it was interesting to make them. But after the second Doomfist montage video, I felt that it was boring to create, watch and farm for clips which took the fun away. Finding suitable copyright free music is annoying also. Maybe it's just me, but I enjoy videos of funny moments over highlight reels. Moreover, I'm not great at Doomfist anyway, so my montages are rather boring, I guess. If you love Doomfist montages, here are some of my friends who do them, or you can always just search on YouTube. Thirdly, I've considered posting general Overwatch gameplay, but then everyone does that anyway, but better, so it never kick off. With that out of the way, I wanted to share the ideas I have for the future of this channel. Do share your thoughts in the comment section or on my Discord server, the link is in the description. Let's talk about Overwatch related ones first. When I first created this channel, I wanted it to focus on the Overwatch workshop, but over the years, it became clear that it's way too niche of a content, so I am looking into expanding the scope of this channel. Firstly, existing workshops will continue to be updated for the foreseeable future. That includes adding new heroes, maps, features and parkour levels. I will also continue to work on commissioned workshop projects like Hanzo Hunting and Eventful Mystery Heroes, if any. Secondly, I love funny moments, and I think some audience love them too. So I want to explore creating funny moment videos and possibly integrate workshops into them. I'm also looking to revive my TikTok channel for cross-posting videos. Lastly, if the developers give the workshop some attention, I might return to creating new workshop content, or wherever I have the urge to do workshop. Now let's talk about non-Overwatch related ones. Firstly, I've been exploring other games lately and could try posting some gameplay content here. I've bought a bunch of games from last year's Steam Winter Sales and I haven't even finished playing all of them. However, this also falls into the same problem of everyone else does the same thing but better, so this may not happen. And secondly, which I think I'm personally the most excited for, I have started making my own game lately. It's still very early into development, and I thought it would be cool to make devlogs showcasing the game's progress, changes, decisions and more. This is also in conjunction with some of the Workshop of Codes community members moving into game development as well. Who knows, 
maybe one day you will get to play my game while queuing for your rank Overwatch matches. I think this idea is a bit more unique as not everyone makes the same game. That's all for now. If you watch through to the end, you are awesome and I appreciate it. To summarize, I discuss why I've been inactive in the workshop scene, the state of Overwatch workshop, what I've tried to do and what I want to explore for the future of this YouTube channel. My inactivity is due to a lack of workshop updates, bug fixes and challenges of discovering complex workshops. I've tried showcasing workshop game nights and making Doomfist montages, but these have been discontinued for various reasons. Moving forward, I am keen to explore new content like Overwatch funny moments, other games and game development logs while continuing to maintain existing workshop projects. With that, thank you to all my subscribers and everyone for watching.